Hallie. Sean, two questions for you. I want to get to one on immigration, but first, on the comments uh, from Judge Gorsuch that have been reported out, yeah. I just have a two part of you. Does the president still stand by his nomination? Absolutely. Given the, the, the where Gorsuch stands, that's number one. This is like a part of ah. First question. <laughs> given where, um, given, given Judge Gorsuch's position on the president's attitude toward the judiciary, and given that the yeah. president has praised Neil Gorsuch for his intellect and for his integrity, mm -hmm. does the president have any regrets about the comments that he's made about federal judges? I think the president's comments speak for them. No, he has no regrets, uh, but he's very proud of the selection he's made. And, He's going to make a great associate justice Not Supreme about Court. About the comments that he said, for example, about Judge I, I understand that. I just, yes, he, he has no regrets. Thank um, you. On immigration, Sorry. Guadalupe Sorry. Garcia de Reyes. <laughs> when you started here for Ryan. <laughs> Why are you calling Should me out? I don't do anything else. <laughs> I know the White House, I'm sure, has been following the situation of Guadalupe Garcia de Reyes. Um, and so I want to know, does the president believe she should have been deported? And what message does he have to other people? Yeah, I'm going to refer you back to ICE on that. that that's an ICE matter. Um, and and no I, 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 the issue is developing in Arizona right now, and I, I would refer you back to ICE. Margaret. Um, I would refer in you the, back to ICE. In that lunch meeting, uh, the president um, said that, you know, he, he basically said Senator Blumenthal's comments were taken out of context, and that well, Judge, no, Judge Gorsuch's Gorsuch comments, right. yeah. His relaying of Judge Gorsuch's comments were taken out of context. However, right. Senator Ayotte, who is working with the White House to help shepherd uh, Judge Gorsuch through the mm -hmm. Hill, released a statement confirming those same remarks, disheartening and demoralizing. Right. So, so here's what Senator. Was the President aware of that? Because hey, she was in aware. that meeting. No, no, I, of course he's aware. This is what Senator Ayotte said. Judge Gorsuch had made it very clear in all of his discussions with senators, including Senator Blumenthal, that he could not comment on specific cases mm -hmm. and that judicial ethics prevent him from commenting on political matters. He has also emphasized the importance of an independent judiciary. And while he made clear that he was not referencing any specific case, mm -hmm. he said that he finds any criticism of a judge's integrity and independence disheartening and demoralizing. Mm -hmm. So there is a big difference between commenting on the specific comments that have been made in the tweet and his general philosophy about the judiciary and his respect for his fellow judges. That's, but, and I think the Senator's comments were very clear about how that those are two distinct issues. Right, and the judge's right. comments as relayed through others were, were also in that context of the President's attacks on the judiciary, which is what the Senator, as you just read out, was also talking about right. there. Okay, so was the president aware of that? Because Senator Ayotte was sitting right across from him when he said that those comments weren't accurately reported no, I, or the way, you know, the way that Senator Blumenthal characterized them, he was talking about the tweets and saying that he was his heart. That's not what the judge said. He was making two very complete, distinct arguments about how he views the, the comments that he should not be uh, commenting on a political matter or on specific things. But as a whole, he doesn't like attacks in general on the judiciary. It was a very distinct argument that he was making. And I think that that's where I think we've got to be clear. And that's what Senator Ayotte was saying this morning. Very, very different. Does Cecilia. Are you take that on board? I mean, does he what? Does he, is he taking that on board? I mean, you just said he doesn't regret his past attacks on the judiciary. Right. But now you have these confirmed remarks, which you were saying were exactly what the judge was talking about. No, no. And the, that's but, not but, hold changing on. the, the But uh, again, I think it's important to understand that the, the, the judge was very clear that he was not commenting on any specific matter, right? And then he was asked about his general philosophy. So you can't then take that, equate it back to the, to the specific. He literally went out of his way to say, I'm not commenting on a specific instance. So to take what he said about a generalization and apply it to a specific is exactly what he was intending not to do. But in other words, the president I, will continue to speak like of this. Of course he will. The president's going to speak his mind. It goes back to Thomas Jefferson that presidents have commented on, on judicial nominees. I mean, the idea of one branch talking about or commenting on another branch is as old as our republic. So I, I don't know why. And, and I, I, I find it interesting when... President Obama criticized the Supreme Court for its Citizens United comments in the State of the Union. There wasn't a similar concern about that. And there is the, the idea that or this is a so-called judge portion. I, I, I get it. I mean, look, attack. but at some point, it's, it seems like there is clearly a double standard when it's how this is applied. When President Obama did it, there was no concern from this briefing room. When he does it. It's, you know, a ton of outrage. So I, I just, with all due respect, I think the president's made very clear that he was concerned about how 
that executive order in particular, which is what we're talking about, was applied. And I think we've addressed it from this briefing room over and over and over again that the U.S. Code gives the President very clear authority to make this happen. Cecilia. Are you, I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. Are you saying that demoralizing and disheartening was not specifically about the President's comments and what he said? And if so, how does the President I, I th know I that? Think the, spoke no, I think the judge literally made it very clear in his comments. I, I, I understand that. Senator, Senator Ayotte, who was there, made it very clear that he was, commenting, he was commenting in general about attacks on the judiciary. That was it, plain and simple. I, I understand that, Cecilia. I, I can tell you with Senator Ayotte, who has been with him on every single thing, was very clear about that. There's no – so I understand that, and, and that is – she has made it very clear over and over again. Yeah. Sean, um, you're – me or, yeah, Sean, your your uh, your answer about the context yeah. doesn't make sense when you think about what Senator Ben Sass said today and this morning on TV. He said that he asked Judge Gorsuch uh, specifically about the president's so-called judge tweet, and in response, Phil, this is like the, the judge, fourth time I've asked an answer. No, but this like, is a different context. Sean. I, I understand that, Phil. I, I've it, asked directly I, about. I, I understand that, and I've said exactly what Senator Ayotte said about it. I don't know how many times but you can ask. Mom, yeah, was only about. Sean, I understand. Involved. Thank you. Yeah. Sean, I'm going to continue on this line despite uh, what, what's happening there. Why isn't the White House, why isn't the President <laughs> concerned about the influence or the appearance of the influence on the independent judiciary? Why isn't he? Can he? I mean, he is free to speak his mind. Why, where has this outrage been for the last hundred years? And there has the been Obama administration or any previous administration. I'm talking about this president. I understand. And the this president White has House. the part of the reason the president got elected is because he speaks his mind. He doesn't hold it back. He's authentic, and he's not going to sit back. I think when he feels very passionately about something as much as the executive order, he was doing it to make sure Americans were safe. The order, the U.S. Code, is crystal clear on this. I think I've read it for like three days in a row. And it can't be any clearer how much authority it gives the president to do what he can to keep it safe. He's concerned that he's doing what he can to keep this country safe, and, and there's been a lot of activity to stand in the way. So I'm not sure how many more times I can read the code to you, but 8 U.S. Code 1182. Yeah, are, I, talking about it is not how the judicial process works. I, I, uh, thank you. You've asked the question now eight times. One more. I'd like to ask you what, excuse me, one more. You've got. About a different set of comments I'm, that have been made. I understand. Thank you. Go ahead. About a different set of comments go ahead. that have been made, Sean, I, I, also from Kellyanne Conway go. earlier this week. Let him go. Earlier from uh, this week, you, you said the uh, in, this is in context of the the Nordstrom, and not about what she was counseled about, yeah. but about um, something she said to CNN <laughs> earlier this week, is that the president doesn't comment on everything, and so I want to contrast the president's repeated uh, statements about Nordstrom with the lack of comments about some other things, including, for example, the attack on Quebec's uh, Quebec Mosque mm -hmm. and uh, other other similar environments. Why is the president, when he chooses to... Do you, do you know, hold on, before, because you just brought that up, I literally stand at this podium and opened a briefing a couple days ago about the president expecting his condolences. I, I literally opened the briefing about it. So for you to sit there and I'm say... Here. I, I know. So why are you asking why he didn't do it when I literally stood the here and did it? Statement. Well, I don't understand what you're Kellyanne's asking. Kellyanne's comment were, were about that the president doesn't have time to tweet about everything. Right. He's tweeting about this. Right. He's not tweeting about something else. I came out here and actually spoke about it and said the president Talk spoke. The president's time. What are you? A tw you're equating me addressing the nation here in a tweet? I don't. I mean, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. Okay, I'm, this is like silly. Okay, next. On, okay, on people, okay. And you're thank you. The You've asked your here. question. Thank you. Does that, that not diminish the thank language you. that you're using? Go ahead. Thank, thank you, Tom. One of the criticisms leveled at President Trump's predecessor, President Obama, by Republicans was his excessive use of executive orders. The president signed three more executive orders today. Why isn't that criticism? Uh, applicable to President Trump in the same manner. I think when you look at the context of what they, yeah, what what those executive orders did, and and there's there's things that are within the bounds of trying to protect this country and ordering police officers. Nothing that I think even Democrats would complain, with the exception of the one that we've had conversations on. Most of them have been widely um, widely praised by both parties. Uh, to keep this country safe, to get jobs creation back. Most of them have been widely applauded. I think the difference with what President Obama did was stretch the executive order to take actions that had largely been uh, within the realm of Congress and to do things that didn't allow for, for prior input. The stuff that the President is doing is by lar almost entirely highly um, 
applauded by both sides of the aisle and won tremendous praise. There is a big difference in the context in which those two administrations operated. One of the criticisms um, in addition to that was that President Obama, in using those EOs, was governing uh, by executive fiat. He wasn't working with right. Congress. Does the President plan but again, to I think use it, Congress right. in a legislative manner? Absolutely. And I just mentioned both tax reform and repealing and placing Obamacare, immigration. There's so many areas where the President's, um, you know, he literally just, we, we held up this briefing a little so that eight United States Senators could walk out and talk about, and, and again, that, that meeting, while it was focused on the judiciary, they talked about infrastructure, they talked about other priorities that they have. Um, he has shown a commitment to work across the aisle, to bring folks in, to listen, to hear their thoughts, uh, to get ideas on a legislative agenda that they can move together with. So I think there's a big difference between the last administration that sort of shunned Congress's role and this administration where the President is actively seeking their input and ideas uh, and, and helping them craft an agenda to move the, the country forward.